This is a computer from my furnace. I used to be a HVAC technician, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, um, back in the day. Anyway, uh, you want to be qualified before you take on something like this. I'm just using this in as, as an example. Oftentimes when you go and buy an aftermarket or remanufactured refurbished computer, um, all they've done, and the reason why a lot of oftentimes they'll fail, is either one of the components will fail. Um, like for example, you'll have a resistor or something like that that burns up. You can see these ones got really hot. They're still hanging in there. The green board's about toast. Um, but look for burn marks and things. Look for an open circuit. If you have something on the printed green board that failed, say for example, let me see if I can get some fine detail shot on this. Say for example, this little spot in the circuit blew out. You could run a splice wire from right here and solder it in there and then also solder it here. Um, you know, just use like some telephone wire or something low gauge. You do want it to be able to burn out, you know, if there is a problem instead of causing a fire burning other circuits out. Anyway, or you look to see if uh, you got a little uh, thing like this. If these blow out, uh, you can replace them. You just look on the side and you'll be able to see. Resistors just get hot. These aren't burned out, but you can see this, you know, they dissipate uh, energy in the form of heat. You replace anything you need or a relay or whatever. Uh, but the main thing that you do when you do a computer repair on a circuit board like this like this one, the problem with it is that this uh, this group plug here, uh, basically the furnace wouldn't come on as given code 32, you know, a ventilation draft problem, and it's because of this circuit and this plug. If you'd wiggle the plug, uh, the furnace would kick on and work fine. And what the problem was with this one is that you get these little halo breaks, just like the video game. Are you excited? I got some people's attention. You get a halo break on these little solder joints. And what happens is because of vibration and stress from the copper wires hanging on this plug, these fracture, you know, like a little circle around there. You can barely, barely see it. Sometimes you have to use some serious magnification to see them. Um, but what you do is you just take your soldering iron and you go on the side of this and then re-solder those. And it fills in the break, the little halo fracture. And uh, then you're good to go again. Oftentimes, especially with Chrysler computers, uh, you'll find that be the case. Or even the head units, you know, which are a green board computer set up like this, you know, like uh, your instrument cluster. You can pull them out and wear the plug. Like, say you've got a big old plug, uh, you can go on the back side and solder each of those points. I did a video on one already, but this is just kind of a good general knowledge, general information thing. Now you may ask yourself, oh, I don't know about computers, and I'm afraid, and well, then don't do it. If you're going to, you know, if you're not confident in your soldering or whatever, then don't do it. But, if you're just going to throw it in the trash anyway, and it's an intermittent short, and you understand disconnecting the power before you pull it out, and not zapping this with any static electricity, you know, don't go walking across the floor with the socks and carpet or whatever. But, uh, oftentimes these can be repaired really easily, and then you don't have the downtime and waiting for shipping and everything. So... Anyway, that's just some basics on uh, uh, PCM, ECM, BCM, you know, like a body control module repair, like a lighting module on Hondas, that's really common. Or even like uh, another one I think I did a repair video on was uh, on a Honda. If your fuel pump isn't coming on, you know, your, your main relay under the dash on like a 94 Accord or whatever, oftentimes you just go in there, it's the same thing. You just solder up the joints and then you're good to go. So I hope you find this helpful. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. As far as soldering, what do I use? Somebody's going to ask that. I use a Hacko. It's a 936. And mine's the one with the add-ons with the flames and everything. But uh, And also, when you're doing electronics, this is important. Always use rosin core solder. Acid core is for if you're going to do like some kind of piping or whatever. But you want to use rosin core. Uh, when you're doing electronics so and you don't really need to use flux here's some radio shack flux you don't really need to do that on this sort of a thing because of the you know the rosin core but uh, you want to use rosin flux with the rosin solder on electronics so and if I think of anything else in the next five seconds I'll add that on too <laughs> but anyway I don't know sometimes if you've been doing something for a while it's easy to forget 
the basics, you know, in terms of explaining, you take it for granted. So I'm trying to get as much on here as I can, answer questions. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching my video. If you want to see more videos like this, uh, click subscribe above and uh, it'll show up in your subscriptions. You can click add to down arrow favorites and access it later. Uh, maybe you find the information now and you want to use it later. That's a good way to save it. Cheers.